Hi everyone, it's Woody from Splice Training in Canada. I'm here to show you a couple more techniques from lesson three of my book, Media Composer 6, Professional Picture and Sound Editing. This tutorial is just a short one about some ways to clean up your sequence. Because often after you do your rough cut and you've moved your clips around, there's little glitches in your timeline that are perhaps not so obvious. The bigger your timeline is, the longer it is in duration, um, the harder it is to kind of notice small little areas where maybe there's a frame missing or there's a gap in your time when you just don't see it. So let's take a look at some ways to locate those. The first thing I want to point out though is there's something called a match frame. If I zoom in on this clip, I'm going to use the, uh, the magnifying glass technique. If you press Command M or Control M on a PC, you get this kind of little magnifying glass wannabe icon. You drag over an area and it just highlights that section. So this is called a match frame edit. Now match frame edit means that technically there's a cut in the timeline, so you can select this clip or you could select that clip. They select differently. But the time code of the clip is consistent all the way through. So when you play it back, as you can see up in the record monitor, there's nothing to indicate there's really a clip there. You know that it's consecutive all the way through because that little symbol, although hard to see, it's really an equal sign. And the white equal sign means that there's no difference with the clip on the left hand side versus the clip on the right hand side. Um, in some other places, I don't know if there's any in my timeline, but some other places you might see a red equal sign, and that means that while the time code's consecutive and it's the same footage, you've got something different on one side than the other. Usually it means that you've got an effect on one side and the effect is not on the other side. But when it's a white equals, it's really easy to remove it. You just select it. Now I'm in trim mode because my smart tools were turned on. Or you can just lasso over it, which also puts you in trim mode and then press delete on the keyboard, or your backspace key. Ta-da, gone. Select it, as long as you're in trim mode, hit that delete key, away it goes. Now I happen to have a few of these in my timeline. Oh, there's one right there. So I have one here in my timeline. Oh, there's another one right there, it's hard to see. So if you just want to remove all of them, because remember, the people at home can't see them, so if they're accidentally made because you were shuffling clips around, uh, for example, maybe I select this clip and I move it over here by dragging it and then I put it back now I have the, the match frame edit because I put the clip back but there's still an actual cut there so if you want to remove all of these uh, the easiest way I can think to do it is just to right click in your timeline and on the pop-up menu choose remove match frame edits Bam they're all gone. So you've just cleaned up your timeline a little bit. Now the next thing you might want to remove are uh, little black frames. That's frames where there's no footage so it just plays back as, like a, as, a, well, as black. Black holes are often made when you pick up a clip and you move it but you don't have the command key held down. So when you go to set it down, instead of being exactly on the frame like this is, you might be off a little bit. And on the left hand side you can see where a black hole is being created. So to find those little black holes, you can go to the clip menu and say, find black hole. The composer says, bam, there's one right there. Let's zoom in on it and say, all right, let's fix that up. We'll just drag this back. Oh, just the video one track. We'll just drag that back like that. Let's go see if there's any more black holes. We know there is because we just made one. So back to the clip menu find black hole, which really means find next black hole, the next one to the right of the blue line. And here it is over here. So we'll zoom in on it. And we will pull this back. Actually, we'll just drag it back on the edit like this to fill in that little gap. Ta-da! That's how you find small little black gaps and black holes in your timeline. It's a great thing to do when you're working on a show after you've conformed it or after you've just done your rough cut and you've been moving a lot of clips around. The easiest way I can think of to avoid having it happen is to ensure that when you drag clips, you hold the command key. And the command key always snaps the clip to the nearest edit, nearest mark, uh, or nearest adjacent clip, which helps prevent you from having any black frames or black holes. Now, aside from a black hole, you can also find a flash frame. A flash frame is just a small section of your timeline where it's not necessarily going to play in black, but 
the clip is so small, it's probably an accident. Uh, maybe something you didn't intend to, so or intend to have. For example, this is just a one-frame clip. I know it's one frame because from the beginning of the blue line to the end of the dotted blue line, which appears when you're zoomed in, that distance represents one video frame. So I know that's one video frame. So what I could do for that is turn off V1, turn off link selection, roll the clip forward, fill in the gap. Zoom back out. Command in the forward slash key says show me my entire timeline. It's like the make it fit command, that's command forward slash. I'll go back to the clip menu, find flash frame, and there's another one here. Let's zoom in. So here's oh here's an error that often happens when you again don't hold that command key down and you're dragging clips around. I've got two single frame clips. So I'll just select the first one, move ahead, mark it out so they're both selected. Make sure both tracks or all my tracks are enabled, either command A or turn it on by pressing V1, um, and I'll lift them out, or extract them out. On. If you'd like to configure how the detection works for the black holes and flash frames, you can do that by going to your project window, settings, timeline, edit, <laughs> it's kind of buried in here, uh, and then say find flash frame shorter than 10 frames. And that's how it knows how long to look for. Uh, of course, a black hole just means we're playing black at this point, so there's no length for it. It's just, here's the part where media computers are putting black. But for flash frames, anything shorter than 10 frames is going to be detected. Well, that's the end of this section. This was just a presentation of two techniques to show you how to find black frames, or sorry, how to find black holes, and how to find flash frames in your media composer sequence, and how to remove and identify match frame edits. Thanks.